Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharatiya and welcome to TFR State of Energy Show. And today we have with us two guests from BTP, Duncan Johnston Watt, CEO and co-founder and Chila Zigri, VP of Strategy. Chila, Duncan, it's great to have you both on the show. Yeah. Uh, hello. Great to be here. Hi. Yes. Uh, glad to be here. So I would love to know a bit about the company. What is the company all about? What do you folks do? And since, Duncan, you are a co-founder, what is the problem that you saw in the space that you felt the need to create a company like this? We are a young company, so just coming up for our fourth birthday. Um, so at BTP, we really set out to solve uh, the challenge of uh, deploying and managing blockchain infrastructure. So my background and my co-founder Kevin's background is all around uh, you know, working with uh, large-scale distributed systems. And we could see an immediate and pressing need to apply that know-how to the enterprise blockchain space. So the company's obviously evolved over time, over the past sort of nearly four years. But essentially, the way we think of ourselves now is we are providing uh, blockchain, uh, uh, enterprise blockchain middleware, uh, we actually call it multi-party middleware. So uh, our focus being on providing a, a very strong, stable platform on which companies uh, can then innovate and develop new multi-party applications and services. Excellent. Uh, thanks for explaining about the company. Now, since uh, the no name of the show and the focus is going to be, you know, state of energy, energy sector. So tell us a bit about, you know, uh, why and when you felt a need, you know, to also serve this sector? I mean, I guess the short answer is that uh, obviously blockchain technology can be, you know, used across industries. But we believe that the energy sector in particular can greatly benefit uh, from this technology. I mean, generally speaking, uh, the energy industry is, you know, has like a broad and diverse uh, set of market participants. And this creates a lot of uh, friction on several fronts when, you know, they, these market participants come together and collaborate, right? And I think current common practices, such as, you know, the use of centralized technology, manual practices that, that, have, that are still being used, you know, have proven to be very inefficient. They are also, you know, prone to error and fraud. And we believe uh, that, uh, you know, blockchain and associated technologies can really alleviate this, uh, these frictions or problems. If you look at blockchain technology, I mean, if you look at the whole evolution, um, it, it is kind of, you know, serving different needs depending on the industry that you look at. Can you talk about, especially in the energy sector, how is it going to help uh, the ecosystem of the companies? How... I mean, what is the role of blockchain technology or BTC in this space? So from a practical standpoint, um, what we're actually looking at uh, as, a, as a sort of generic use case is provenance. So provenance could be applied very broadly. So provenance really means tracking the sort of the life cycle of assets. Um, and that can be any asset in any industry. It can even be digital assets, but specifically around uh, energy. And by the way, energy is, has been designated one of the uh, U.S., critical categories for critical infrastructure. So this is a very important area to, to ensure that, you know, from a safety point of view and a security point of view, you absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me, you absolutely know uh, what assets have been used, say, for example, to create a pipeline. Um, and not only where those assets were sourced, so the pipe itself, but who was responsible for transporting it, who was responsible for uh, laying that pipe and also, uh, you know, welding it and so forth. All of that information, all of that uh really can be uh, encapsulated as, you know, what is the provenance, uh, what is the history of that pipeline? Um, and that has, you know, significant implications from our safety, from a regulatory point of view. Uh, and as Chilla said, there are certainly there are there are processes and, and, and in place that, that attempt to do that today, but they are largely centralized. And, and the idea of using a DLT is it actually allows you to extend beyond that centralized uh, resource and actually, in many cases, uh, spread the, the DLT out across the industry, across the participants. So you're capturing this critical data. You're normally using a permissioned blockchain. So uh, besides being members of the LF Energy community, we're also members of the Hyper Ledger Foundation, as well as CNCF, uh, and most recently, uh, the Open Source Security Foundation. And all of these we see as, uh, as complementary uh, and all contributing to you know, us delivering what we can do as, uh, as a company, but also doing it in, in the context of the broader community. 
Yeah, and, and just to add something to that, like, you know, the, the, the need to ensure provenance comes up in other areas as well, right? So another, like, I, I guess, good example would be, you know, renewable energy, which is obviously critical uh, to you know, sort of create a more sustainable world. And to prove that that uh, energy is supplied from a green source and consumed is like 100% re renewable, you know, you need to use digital technologies that can allow that, right? And, you know, right now that's um, not really the case. And we believe that, you know, blockchain technology can really help um, to achieve that. What are the other areas or what is the scope beyond just tracking physical, you know, uh, you know uh, inventory there? That was really just one example of provenance in action. Um, so... Uh, when you talk about supply chain, um, this is outside of uh, the energy sector, but we're working closely with companies in healthcare, um, uh, where again, the, you know, the, the issue of being reliable, being accurate, uh, being immutable, you know, is really to the fore. Um, so I think, you know, the best way of thinking about us as a company is we're an enabler. So, you know, this is one of a number of technologies you, you hinted at that yourself when you said, you know, it's blockchain and associated technologies. It's also smart contracts uh, and it's also providing support for information security. So, so all of those components you know, go together in our, in our mind to create a, a platform on which you can then uh, build and develop new and interesting applications. And we have this term inside the company, bridging the gap. So the gap really is the gap between the, the platform and its application in a particular domain. Um, and so we found ourselves getting involved in, in really helping to act as a catalyst. So not just providing the platform, but also uh, providing some of the expertise to help people bridge that gap. I mean, if you look at the whole grid infrastructure in today's world, it is also becoming software defined. It is no more black boxes from old time, you know, uh, even subsystems or software design, which also means that it might be Become vulnerable to cyber attacks as well. So security might become a very serious topic as you know it is becoming in other spaces as well. So do you see, uh, as I said earlier, that it could be out of the scope of this discussion that at some point there will be effort for security also in this energy sector and blockchain or other such adjacent project might help. So it's I don't think it's off topic at all. Uh, I, I I think you know one cannot. Uh, the way we think about it, and Chilo, please jump in, is um, you you can't bolt security on as an afterthought. You know, you, you know. Oh, I need some security quick. Where do I get that? Um, it's got to be actually built into the the platform. And I think you know, Chilo's studied this for many years uh, as an industry analyst, and and can probably answer this better than myself. But you know, it it needs to be embedded in in the platform from the get go. I don't know, Chilo, if you want to expand on that. Yeah, no, I guess it's just the, the way they put it now is like, it needs to be secure by design, right? So built in security from the beginning and not like, as you said, um, sort of pe patching and uh, buying security. In the when and why you joined LF Energy? So we actually joined uh, last summer. So um, uh, we, we actually came across uh, LF Energy um, through... Uh, as you do, classically sort of uh, being involved with the Linux Foundation, um, uh, attending various events such as the, uh, the their, their member summit. Um, and uh, it's what's interesting to us about LF Energy is it's, it's a new breed of project within the Linux Foundation in that it's vertically aligned with a specific industry or sector. So healthcare is another one that uh, LF has been focused on. And so whereas our previous um, uh, involvement was all around uh, the technologies like Kubernetes, like uh, through the High Pleasure Foundation, things like High Pleasure Sawtooth and Bezu and so on. Um, LF Energy was, uh, was for us a, a new departure because it was looking at tackling uh, problems in a very specific domain. Um, so that's really what piqued our interest. And then when we looked at some of the initiatives that were actually happening within the LF Energy space and actually spoke to the, uh, the team there, we felt, well, we could definitely contribute to the debate and the discussion and potentially over time contribute to some of the projects. So, so as of now, of course, we are still, we're, we're still, uh, you know, relatively new members. So we're still finding our feet and, 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 and working out, uh, you know, where can we best play a role? But uh, it was the fact that they're tackling a specific vertical that, that, and, and one that we see as immensely important. Um, uh, and we're already looking at ourselves independently of LF. That's that's really what what drove us to make the decision. 
you joined you folks joined last year uh, can you like you know share with us what kind of discussions you are having where you see the potential for blockchain technology uh, not only just you know energy sector but within the lf energy ecosystem because they already have a lot of you know players some are very big player eliander rt and all those folks so talk, talk about you know what kind of discussions are happening around blockchain there so unfortunately i can't tell you who we're working with but uh but i'm sure in, in due course uh, you know we can but we can share this but but we're working with one of the the si's i'm working specifically with uh, they're experts within the energy sector. So, so you know, from our point of view, it's always uh, we feel it's always right, uh, and in fact, it's 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 actually beneficial to us to be involved with the broader community. Um, and in this particular case, this SI has a you know very strong track record uh, in in the energy sector. So we're also keen at some stage to to convince them to also join uh, the 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 LF Energy uh, initiative. Now that's a little ways off, but uh, but I think you know uh, from where we sit or fit, um, it, it is back to what I was saying earlier. It's about enabling innovation, um, uh, and so that's why we're partnering with this SI um, around the the sort of energy uh, sector and energy use case more generally. Yeah, and and, and by the and within the LF Energy in particular, I mean we are in the process. I mean we, jo- we joined recently, and. Uh, you know, we are in the process of learning more about the about the different projects, as well as seeing who are those specific partners that we can, you know, explore opportunities with. First of all, uh, we are depending on how you look at it, uh, climate change, this this crisis. Or once again, you know, whatever term you want to use for there. What role do you think organizations like LF Energy can play there by bringing a lot of players together? Because energy sector is a smaller space, but also the companies are big. They are in some <laughs> capacity monopolies in their own space. There will be only one company in one country. Uh, so talk about the role that LF Energy is playing in bringing this player together to to tackle this big challenge that is facing all of us. Well, I think Chilla touched on that a little bit earlier in terms of uh, ensuring the, uh, uh, the, the the provenance of of energy itself and where it's coming from, and is it actually you know sustainable? Uh, uh, and is it is it what it purports to be essentially? So that's that's one one example. Uh, we 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 were attending a, a roundtable uh, recently where uh, this topic also came up, and somebody reminded the the group that uh, Marley Gray, who's um, uh, uh, one of the, the leads in this area um, within Microsoft, uh, and who's very closely involved with the. Uh, the Interwork Alliance, which is now part of GBBC, Global Blockchain Business Council, he made the point very strongly that actually uh, there aren't enough carbon credits uh, today available to actually offset Microsoft's needs as it aims to be, you know, uh, aims for its, uh, uh, to meet its targets. Um, So the the question then arises, well, how do we improve that? Um, And, you know, the short answer is, uh, we need to actually uh, improve the entire um, uh, carbon credits and carbon offsets uh, market um, and create um, uh, a way of auditing uh, all of these credits. Um, and that's something which is ongoing. Um, and clearly, it, 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 it's adjacent to, but, but very close to uh, the energy sector itself. Um, but, but that's just one part of the equation, I would say. Um, but, you know, we have this... You know, challenge that are we fiddling while Rome burns in the in the sense of you know it's great to have these objectives and these ESG statements made by all, all the companies in the world and I don't think there's a company now a large multinational that hasn't you know laid out its strategy but how do you then back back that up um, and so you know that that's an initiative that the energy sector needs to be involved in but also many others besides. Duncan Chilla, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about BTP and uh, the potential uh, for blockchain technology in LF, you know, not only enough energy, but energy sector in general. Yeah, and you also share some use cases. I'm kind of curious about uh, the projects that you folks are working on. So I'd love to have you back on the show whenever there's some progress. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. And we look forward to uh, you know coming back on the show when we have more to share. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs>